We're continuing our exploration of Ningxia Red today. If you missed our last episode, head over to YouTube, Spotify, or Apple Podcasts to hear the exciting story of Gary learning about the wolfberry, native to the Ningxia province in China. Now, we'll focus on how the people there use the berry historically and some of the amazing Young Living products that use it today. Hello and welcome to Young Living's podcast, The Wild Drop. My name is Jacob Young, your host. Young Living is a world leader in producing and distributing premium essential oils, and this podcast will provide you with drops of information about Young Living, including stories, history, product information, lots of little fun facts, and even more. John, welcome back to the show. It's been such a long time since you were here. Yeah, thanks. John is part of Special Projects, and obviously we have a new face and an expert here with us today, Jared Gower, who is our Director of Product Development, correct, in APAC, right? Correct, yep. So it's been a long time. I've been with Young Living now since 2008. I did uh, spread my wings a little bit and and took you know a job elsewhere, but as a family and that family feel of Young Living, I've come back here. Um, but yeah, it's been a privilege working with a number of these products, um, working on even from this, the original Ninksha Red, and then the new Ninksha Red, the Zing, Ninksha Nitro. It's always a, a, a fun time to work with our Ninksha containing products. So. Well, thank you for coming back and thank you for all that you've been doing with Ninksha Red. So in the first episode of this Wolfberry episode marathon, you know, even though it's only two episodes, we talked about the history and the background of, you know, Wolfberry and the Goji Berry and how it came to be as a product. So now I want us to dive into the traditional uses, how it was used, why it was used, and then how it actually became a product of Young Living. Yeah, we mentioned that uh, it grows it grows on a tree. It's kind of like, a, it's small, like maybe a little bit smaller than a cherry tomato. It's actually much longer and skinnier. And um, they eat them fresh, uh, and uh, and it tastes actually kind of like a cherry tomato with a, a little bit different flavor, of course. Um, and but we related, we we talked about how they're kind of related to the same uh, family in of, the nightshade family, nightshade family, yeah. And uh, but uh, historically, they they needed to preserve them because they're not going to and, and also transport them. And so uh, historically, they've just dried them, kind of like taking grapes and turning them into raisins okay. so that they can be stored long-term, transported. Um, that's very traditional use for uh, the Chinese people is to uh, buy them as a dried product. And, and that's also how we initially started um, importing them into the United States and selling them through Young Living yeah. is that also through this dried berry just the dried berry packets are awesome. Yeah. I love just snacking and, on that. Oh, yeah, and we still sell it today. It's so, so good. Yeah. So the traditional use, how were the the people using it? You said they, they had it in a tea mostly in the very beginning when yeah. my dad kind of discovered them. Mm -hmm. If Is there any data that dates back like to a long time ago where they used it differently or they had other methods for it? Yeah, so um, there's there are different Chinese medicine pharmacopoeias that talk about yeah, different w ways that you can use the wolfberry. Um, so there's definitely a lot of historical usage and, and they talk about different health benefits. Um, but it's also just used as a flavorant, a garnish in dishes. There's lots of soups that they would just drop a couple of these dried berries into them. They would also reconstitute these dried berries and then put them as a garnish on top of other dishes. They're a bright red color. Yeah, yeah. And they contrast really well with um, like a green vegetable that's also in the dishes. So they just really help to liven up and brighten up dishes. And if you go to an authentic Chinese restaurant today, it doesn't matter whether that's here in the States or in China. There's a good chance you'll see some some reconstituted dried berries on the top of the dish. Awesome. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. So now I really want to get into the good stuff that everybody wants to know. Why did my dad choose the wolfberry? What was the actual reason behind it? Because as you know, my dad always developed products and, and made products for a specific purpose. Mm -hmm. So what was the reasoning behind Ningxia Red, what got him so excited about the wolfberry? I think it just has to do with the fact that the people where these berries come from, they were consuming a large amount of them and they were living a long time. And so I think your dad was trying to draw a connection between health and wellness and consumption of these berries. 
Fantastic. Yeah, I think probably one of the specific things that he looked at, um, so a scientific term there, polyphenols, so the, anti- the antioxidants found within the wolfberries, I think that's probably key to that longevity and the long life that, that they saw in that area. Um, even just that, the polyphenols, antioxidants, those benefits, as he chose the number of the different fruits and their juices that were used in there, that's where he made that selection, was really to help support all of those body systems. So the, the great thing about, you know, all the products that we have here at Young Living, they all have this fantastic timeline that's like never ending. It's always constantly evolving and upgrading and, and being updated and whatnot. So we talked about the Berry Young Juice and how it came to Ningsh Red. And obviously, you know, I would say this is like Ningsh Red 2.0. Yeah. <clears throat> so we talked about how the transition from Berry Young to Ningsh Red happened. But how did Ninx Red to Ninx Red 2.0 happen? What has changed? What's different? What's new? What's better about this one compared to the older one? Yeah, so actually, before, before we talk about that, I did want to explain one of the historical um, nutrition profile things that we looked at er- er- earlier on. Yeah. Um, and if you saw the first episode that we did, um, and we, we started off that episode with the Indiana Young and the Elixir of yeah, Life, yeah. Where, where your dad is like searching for the Barry Young juice. And um, in, in that video, there's this thing that slides out that's like supposed to try and impale them. And, uh, and he says, oh, we're not afraid of the ORAC scale. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. What is that? So the ORAC scale is is it's it's measuring the oxide, the antioxidant um, of oh, of, okay. a, of a of a nutrition product. It's its capacity to absorb or to yeah make it so it's not an oxidant anymore. Yep. So if you've seen so anybody who's been around a while, they would have seen a ton of uh, uh, information about the ORAC scale and, and what all that means. And it was one of the things we talked about earlier on. But but Jared mentioned that it's it's not really something that we that we mention anymore, even though we still would sky score really, really high on the ORAC scale. Yeah, I think we'd probably still be in the market if you looked at fruit type juices, juices there. Ninja Red was still scale or score at the very top. Um, what had happened, the USDA, so here in, in like your nutrition field, the USDA utilized ORAC to um, kind of quantify the amount of antioxidants in oranges, apples, uh-huh. fruits, your common fruits and vegetables. Well, people utilized that and said, hey, let's make a product then that can score better than those fruits and vegetables. But they would also try and trick it by using synthetic, synthetic vitamin mm. Cs, ascorbic acids, that type of thing, just to spike an ORAC value. Versus like Ninja Red is based off of all whole foods and, and natural, natural ingredients. That's a natural ORAC value. So yeah, there became that competition. So instead of focusing on that, then you know, you know your dad wanted to move more to like that balance and specificity and a whole, you know, s- complete package of, of antioxidant versus just spiking it with one. I love that. Yeah. So you do seem to know quite a bit about this Ninja Red <laughs> versus Ninja Red 2.0. So is there any more that you'd like to share about what's different between these two and how it's evolved and become even better than what yeah. it was before? For sure. Yeah, maybe kind of with my background in nutrition, that's what I love about our products and even Ninja Red. Like your dad was never happy just to say, hey, we have Ninja Red and we're done. Yeah. Same with the nutrition field. It's an ever evolving, sometimes it's frustrating, right? How many times have we heard eggs are good or bad for you versus <laughs> there's so many of yeah. those, right? But it is a fun science because with new studies, with new findings, with new innovation, you can have new products and always improve your products. Same with Ninja Red. One of the probably key features that I loved back when we were doing it, us being an essential oil company, the amount of oil found in the new product, at the time, I think we were 7 to 14 times. Now, we'd have to look that up to get specifics. Wow. But definitely, as you look at the four essential oils added to it, your yuzu, orange, tangerine, and what am I missing, John? There's a fourth one. Lemon? Did lemon. I say lemon? Yes. Yep. Lemon. Um, so we're, we have 7 to 14 times more in Ningxia Red 2.0, 2.0 than we did in the 2005 formulation. Wow. Exactly. Wow. With that, it was some of the new technologies and things is how they blended the oils in. Um, as you do know, oils will want to separate a little bit, yep. and you will see that in the product, which kind of lets you know the oils are in there. You will see an oil-type line sometimes in your yeah. bottle, which I think is awesome. And that's you see the oils. totally natural, too. I mean, I don't know if the camera can see it, but the bottle that we have on the wall, you can kind of see that separation yeah. a little bit right yeah, there those, as well. Those are the solids that yep. have separated out, because we talked about how the original Berry Young juice was just juice. There were no yeah. solids. Yep. And so, yeah. It really is. It's cool to see before you shake the bottle, you will have a level of the 
puree, the wolfberry, because uh-huh. it does have seeds, all of it, it's, it's that solid in the bottom. You will see kind of a shiny top, which can be some of those oils. The oils will blend in as yeah. well, but there will be those portions of it. And then the other helpful juices that are in it, you can kind of see that middle middle space. So quite a, quite a cool product. And especially once you mix it up, then you get what you see today there with everything blended together. Yeah. It's fantastic. And, and like you said, the, the nutrition field, and I think this is true of every field, you can't just stop in one spot and call it good because, you know, everything's evolving and changing and there's always new stuff being discovered. I remember when we did our expedition in Peru just not too long ago that we found some new botanicals that haven't been discovered for a very long time. And it's crazy to think, you know, we're this far into earth in itself, right? And that we're just discovering some of these things as well. So I'm sure later down the road in a few years, maybe we'll have Ningxia Red 3.0 because we find better ingredients, you know, whatever it may be. So I'm super excited. 7 to 14, that blows my mind. Yep. I did not know that number at all. So that's fantastic. It's really to hear. where the flavor comes through too. I mean, your, your oils that were chosen were definitely utilized for some of those antioxidant capacity yeah. and the other helpful aspects of the oil. But then it also pairs very well with the juices that were chosen with the wolfberry, and it gives it that flavor that everyone loves of Ningxia Red. Also, there's quite a bit uh, of a difference between the packaging of Ningxia Red 1.0 and (laughs) 2.0. Yes. And I think that one of the reasons is they really wanted to show off the juice. It's a beautiful juice. It is. It's it's a whole juice. It has all that stuff in there. And if you put this big uh, shrink wrap on it, you you just can't can't see it. And so like, we're really proud of what is in that bottle, and we wanted to show it off. It's such a fantastic bottle. I remember there was a time where we had um, someone come from uh, our, our supplier for wolfberries over for breakfast one time. And my dad was in the process of like growing wolfberries at the house one time, but he couldn't figure out like why they weren't growing so well. Oh, do, yeah, do you yeah. remember that, that? Was, that was a long time ago for you. Yeah. Um, so that, yeah, that was, that was really fun because I was the, I was the translator. So um, Mr. Pon, as, as that's how we, that's what we call him, Mr. Pon and, and his wife and daughter flew over to just meet with us. You know, every couple of years, we want to make sure we keep that relationship with yeah. our supplier going. And so he had flown over to the States and we were having breakfast at your house. And uh, your dad some, said something like, it'd sure be nice if the wolfberry trees would grow wolfberries. <laughs> <laughs> or, or I don't know exactly what he said. And Mr. Pond kind of laughed and he said, oh, you must be pruning them wrong. And he was like, oh, there's a specific way to prune them. And, and your dad was so excited to learn about this. It was like everything we could do to get breakfast over with. And then we jumped in the car <laughs> and we drove down to the farm. So the Mona farm has, um, it's called Show Row. Yeah. And where they just have a bunch of different botanicals growing from all over the world. So even though we're not growing uh, wolfberries or goji berries here for production, there is there are a couple of short rows of bushes in the show row area of Mona Farm. So we went down there and it was really fun for me um, to uh, translate (laughs) how to properly prune a wolfberry tree. And um, yeah, there's just like certain branches that grow like vertically and they have lots of spikes on them, like lots of thorns. Mm -hmm. And then there's other soft branches that grow but they grow best if you clip off all of those vertical branches. So you want to get rid of all of this, the, the really spiky vertical branches and just get the like limber, like huh. soft branches. And uh, when you do that, then then they'll put out flowers and grow. So there's actually a little bit of... Interesting. Yeah. yeah. That's super cool. Magic to the to the They're growing berries now. I do believe that they were able to, yeah. to grow berries. I have and, seen a few down there. We and, actually do eat some of the wolf berries off of the wolf yeah. berry tree that we have at our house. Yeah, yeah, at yeah. My mom's place. So they're right. really good. Yeah. They're great. So it's just always fun to see how excited your dad is to just learn whatever the new thing is. Yeah. So like a kid in a candy store, except yeah. the candy was research <laughs> and yeah. science. I love it. Yeah. One thing that I'd also love to share, and when we shared this at our convention this year, is we actually did some amazing clinical trials with Ningxia Red. And Jared, is there some information that you can share about those clinical trials and some of the amazing numbers that we learned from that? Yeah, for sure. Um, You know, just to do probably Dr. Carlson and that the science team justice. Yes. um, With my current role, you know, doing more of the product development stuff, I I wasn't involved directly with that study. But I did reference some of the cool things that we can say from that, which I find very rewarding and very, you know, it's, it's a great thing to support our products. When you actually have testimonials to support it, that's one thing. But then also when we've done a clinical study to support, 
you know, our number one nutritional product. That's really cool yeah. as well. And so. also, I should probably mention one of the reasons we have Jared on the show here today is because he's been to China multiple times. <laughs> he's been to the Ningxia province. He's seen the wolf berries. Yep. Yep. And uh, so, yeah, he really is kind of stepping in to present somebody else's research. But uh, I don't think Rich was available today. I don't think Not so. today, and, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, but Jared has been there and seen it. Yeah. So. yeah, maybe we just run through a few of them. So yeah. looking at that study, um, when they did the study, they had 160 participants. So that's a good size for a study. Um, as they looked at it, then they just looked at a certain criteria, different scores, looked at, at you know things that we wanted to say about the product. Um, with that, each person consumed two ounces of Ningxia Red, and they did that for a total of 60 days. So kind of like we did internally for the company with mm -hmm. our Ningxia Challenge, yeah. I think a lot of that was based off of what we saw from this clinical study. So with that, um, yeah, if you don't mind, let me even just read a few of these, Go Jacob. for it. So yeah, it was clinically shown to support a healthy inflammation response. So again, being compliant with all that we can say, we have worded these in a way that, that yeah. is compliant. Um, it's clinically shown to support healthy respiratory function, which is great. Clinically shown to significantly increase physical energy levels. So as we look, currently, so if you see, you have zinc, which it does have, you know, that pick me up. Mm -hmm. But there's also naturally occurring caffeine in zinc. Yep. Ningxia Red can do that same type of energy pickup with just those natural juices. So if someone doesn't want to have that naturally occurring caffeine, I love zinc. I probably drink it each day. Yeah, I love it too much. <laughs> um, but yes, Nature Red is going to give you some of that additional energy as well. Um, it helped. The funny thing is, helps with energy. Also help people with their sleep patterns. Yeah. So with that, you can tell it's not necessarily a caffeine stimulant like pick me up for energy. It's more just helping those body systems work in parallel, work together, and make your body function well. Um, maybe that last one was a significant decrease in daily stress levels. And that was seen probably in both male and females, but I think even more in the female population that was studied. Yeah, so. and, in, and in these times, I feel like that's so helpful. So there's a lot going on for sure. So yeah, a product there for you to help you rest, help you have energy, help you think, help you, you know, and all those daily. And things. inflammation as well, which yep. is fantastic. It's it's a great, great product. I, I love it. I love Zing, Zing is my go-to, it's my favorite. And I think, uh, you know, we, we shared a few videos, you know, in the first episode. There is one video that I would love to share, and it was when we announced Ningxia Nitro. Just the creativity and the fun behind that video. So if we can cue up that video really quick, that'd be great. Oh, golly, it's been a great day in the dunes today. And now we're gonna go have some fun. The wind settled down. We're gonna make some jumps. But I gotta have a little Ninja Red high octane juice fuel my tank. Oh boy, that hits the spot. Ah, that's good stuff. But you know the real kicker? Is this Ninja Nitro? Oh my goodness. Man, when you add this to your tank, it really gives you a boost. Well, I'm gonna give my little car an advantage because I want to make a great jump this second time. We'll just give it a shot. All right, now we'll see what she'll do. See you in the dunes.
Well, that was a crazy video, isn't it, John? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, if uh, so, there's obviously where it just fades to white there at the end, um, and if it weren't to fade, you would see the the car land. Uh, you actually just land so far down the hill, you would you wouldn't be able to really see what happened. Um, but then you you would see me running out there, and I would be highly concerned. Um, yeah, your dad, uh, he kind of got hurt and, uh, just a little bit. Yeah, he he sent, broke his back. <laughs> yeah. He sent it. He was, he was not afraid to send it to the max. So yeah. it's really it's funny. Cr- cause if you go back through that video, you can actually see when they were filming it before he rolled it and when you filmed it after he rolled it. So if you pay attention to the flags, there's no flags. when there's yeah. shots with the flags, it was before he rolled it. Right. When you see some shots without the flags, that was after he rolled it. So. Yeah, so there's actually two accidents. He rolled it, and it rolled seven times. He got out, um, didn't get hurt. Yeah, he said and, it was like slow mo. Yeah, he said it was super slow. And uh, and then and then he uh, just really launched it over that hill and and came down pretty hard and just landed right on the back of the car. But the funny thing is, is um, you know, I ran down there and I said, uh, "Are you okay?" And he's like. Uh, that hurt. That hurt really bad. But he was like, don't tell Mary. <laughs> and I'm like, the car is like kind of messed up in the back. And he's like, yeah. But then the interesting thing is, this is something that people don't pick up on is the first part of the video where he's like, okay, let's head out to the dunes. I'm going to put a little nitro in my tank. That was after he wrecked it. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we're like, you don't see the back of the car. Yeah. Like we really zoomed in on the back of the car. So your dad's back was broken. In if, that shot? It, so when he's wow. climbing out of the car, you can see that he's in a lot of pain if you know to look for it. And uh, yeah, so we shot that. The, the car was already wrecked. Yeah, and we just we just like we're very careful about what we showed. <laughs> so fun little, fun little fact there. <laughs> I, this is one of my, one of my favorite reasons. You are really young. Podcast. It's <laughs> like, there's still so much that I'm learning and just yeah. finding out about. That's great. Yeah. The, the fact that we've expanded this line to as much as we have, you know, we have the wolfberry crisp bars, we have the dried wolfberries, you know, the zing, the nitro and the red and the greens. Now the yeah. greens are new too. Yep. Is there anything about the greens because they're newly released as well, Jared, that you can share a little bit about as well? Yeah. So on the greens, what's great there is typically these featuring the berry piece of, of the Ninxia wolfberry. As you look at greens, it was actually a sprouted leaf. So very unique to mm-hmm. young living, but again, with some of those healthy benefits. So not only are we using just a berry piece, but also looking at additional pieces from that same providence that can help impact a product for good. So, yeah. And the greens are super tasty. Love the greens. And the video, you know, that the creative team came up with as well, um, you know, showing everything that's inside it with that one scoop is just fantastic. So it's crazy how much we've expanded this line, not only in like the Ningxia line itself, but we also have Wolfberry in so many other products as well. Cause it's, it's a fantastic ingredient. Are, are, well, I know there's sulfur or, or, or we have a, a component of the Wolfberries. Yeah. 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 It, so we have, yeah, there's a couple other, so we have uh, Wolfberry polysaccharides. If you read the labels, you'll, you'll be able to see, see these. Uh, we have Wolfberry seed oil, and um, I think there's also just dried wolfberry powder. Dried wolfberry it, powder. Yeah. Then the puree, of course, and nature yeah. red and zing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, for instance, um, even the granola. The the is it Gary's Einkorn True Grit Granola? <laughs> I'm probably. Oh yeah, there's dried yeah, there's wolfberries, dried wolfberries in, there. in that. Yeah. Um, and uh, but yeah, there's uh, an, an eye cream, a couple of skin products that have wolfberry seed oil in them. Working with our Asia Pacific markets, our college in there in Asia, I know that one. I'd have yeah. to familiarize myself more with the one we just launched in the U.S. But yeah, yeah. it's in a number of products. Uh, yep. Sulfurzyme, I think, has wolfberry dried wolfberry powder or wolfberry polysaccharides. Polysaccharides. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, we didn't actually. We didn't put a list together. This is <laughs> there's just, so. Yeah. I know there's so many. Yeah. Because it's just a fantastic ingredient. So and once again, like it just seeing how all of this has evolved into what it is now just because of Gary's quench <laughs> thirst for knowledge, you yeah. know, is fascinating to see. And I, and I can't wait to see how we expand this line even more just because there's, there's so much to it. And there's probably some stuff that we may not know right now that we're still looking towards, you know, it's just wanting to know more, wanting to be more knowledgeable and informed in, in that area. So I'm excited to see where the line will go. John, Jared, 
thank you so much for coming on to the show and sharing, you know, your knowledge, your expertise, and, and for sharing your time. And a huge shout out to everyone involved in Ningxia and, you know, all of our products as well. It takes such a big team of people to get just one product out into your hands. And not a lot of people know just how many people are involved, how many steps are involved. It, it's a huge process. And so truly appreciative for everyone involved, including you guys. So thank you so much for coming on to the show. You. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you for tuning into this episode of The Wild Drop. Remember, you can listen on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, or online at www.youngliving.com. Don't forget to oil up, or in this case, drink up, Young Living family. This is Jacob Young, dropping out. Take care. Take care.